Welcome back friends. We are talking about uh, the intrinsic conduction system of heart and how blood is flowing through heart. And in this video we will be talking about the blood pressure. Okay. So what is blood pressure actually? It's very easy. Blood pressure is <coughs> the amount of pressure created by the blood in per inch of our blood vessel wall. So if you look at it, it's, it's a kind of theoretical definition that if you take a blood vessel the blood is flowing through the blood vessel and when the blood is flowing through the blood vessel the the red blood cell mostly uh, the constituent of blood is red blood cells and uh, some other cells but mostly red blood cells they are continuously hitting onto the wall of red blood cell uh, or here, wall of artery sorry and when it is continuously hitting to the blood vessel it is creating a pressure now that pressure created by the blood blood cells onto the wall of our artery or vein is called as a blood pressure <clears throat> okay and why at all they create pressure because normally what we know because what we can see that here is, is our heart and throughout the whole body the heart needs to pump the blood why because in each section of of our body we are having cells and for the surviveance of the cells they require nutrients as well as oxygen oxygen is carried by red blood cells and nutrients are present in our blood or serum so for delivering nutrients and blood and oxygen to each cell of our body it requires to deliver blood in each cell of our body and to deliver blood in each cell of our body it's very very important to have a pump otherwise what we know why we require pump to push something harder because if something is on the top then something is in the bottom we don't require any pump because it can usually come the process via gravity but actually if we need to pump it some different regions via very complicated pathways we require a pressure to pump it and that's why in our body also we require a pressure to pump the blood to all the different cells of our body and for that reason we require heart <clears throat> so as heart is there it is creating the pressure by pumping how actually due to the presence of different rhythmic auto rhythmic tissues now those tissues generate the rhythm by electrical signal then it conducts through different regions and finally it reaches to the uh, tissues and tissues getting constructed now when the tissues getting constructed and relaxes it, it is kind of pushing the blood when the tissue is getting constricted it is pushing the blood especially uh, it depends on this <coughs> this particular section which is called the ventricle ventricle is filled with blood and the ventricle is kind of constricts when the ventricle constricts it pushes the blood through arteries throughout the body to supply it throughout the body and from using the veins all the part of from all the part of the body blood again come back to the uh, atrial portion but that's not the part of our discussion our part of discussion is that ventricle pushes the blood throughout the body as it as it getting constructed so as it is pushing the blood the blood is moving through the blood vessel it is continuously hitting onto the blood vessel creating the blood pressure <clears throat> so if i draw this image here if i draw the blood is going <clears throat> so these are the red blood cells you can see some of the red blood cells they can easily move through by the central region but some of them are not moving through the central region instead they are moving through the side regions and they are continuously hitting onto the wall now those one which are continuously hitting onto the wall due to the reason that they are going sideways those one are pretty much slow in the race rest of them which are moving in the central region are ahead of them in the race right now this kind of divisional movement of speed of the blood uh, uh, blood uh, cells through the blood vessel is called as laminar flow it's called as laminar flow due to this laminar flow many of the blood cells continuously make pressure or create pressure onto the wall of our blood vessel and that generates the pressure okay now the pressure is usually generated by the construction of atria okay uh, sorry ventricle now as it generates this pressure can be of majorly two types once when this ventricle constricts it 
provides much amount of blood passes through the arteries to reach our body so when it is pushing the blood in huge amounts it is creating a high pressure of the blood onto the wall of our blood vessel so the high pressure so let me write ventricular constriction it generates <clears throat> high blood pressure it is called systole or systole and second thing which is ventricular relaxation creates low blood pressure that means when the blood is not flowing that much in high pr pressure will be called low blood pressure or diastole systole and diastole and the pressure that is generated in systole is called systolic pressure and the pressure generated in the diastole phase of the ventricular relaxation phase is called the diastolic pressure now the systolic pressure obviously it, it is it will be higher usually for human being the systolic pressure is equivalent to 120 millimeter of mercury and the diastolic pressure is almost 80 millimeter of mercury now what does it mean actually when we're talking that it is equivalent to 120 millimeter of mercury that means if we construct a 120 millimeter long mercury <coughs> 120 millimeter long pipe which will hold the mercury the pressure that mercury will create will be equivalent to the blood pressure at this systole similarly in case of the diastole it will be equivalent to 80 millimeter long <coughs> tube of mercury and the diameter is fixed i don't remember the diameter but it is all obviously fixed okay <coughs> so these are the two things now except for this systolic and diastolic pressure we are also having another thing that we can compute from them which is called pulse pressure so let me write pulse pressure <clears throat> pulse pressure is simply the difference between systolic pressure and diastolic pressure <clears throat> that's how we get the pulse pressure okay normally when you feel the <coughs> pulse here we get the pressure it's called the pulse pressure it's simply the difference because we can't measure individual uh, pressure caused by systole and individual pressure caused by diastole but in, instead what we can get here we can get the understanding that when you hit when, when you feel something hitting and then relaxing that is called <coughs> the pulse pressure actually okay and there is another important thing that, that I must say and that is called <coughs> mean arterial mean arterial pressure mean arterial <coughs> arterial pressure or it is also called as map mean arterial pressure <coughs> now mean arterial pressure is <coughs> the mean of the pressure or average of pressure that is provided by the blood cells or blood flow through the blood vessels so it's the average of all the pressures right so that means we are having a systolic diastolic pressure so if you're probably thinking that if we make a mean of them we can get the mean of this pressure which is the mean arterial pressure but that's not exactly true we'll take the mean but we won't take <coughs> add them and divide it by two we never do that why <coughs> because normally the systolic pressure stays for shorter period of time and the diastolic event or diastole is stayed for longer period of time so if we calculate them if we add them and divide them by two it will make a horrible mistake because usually the diastole time is higher so we need to give priority to the diastole first then to the systole right so the usual way of calculating this kind of pressure is simply 
by the following formula that you usually put the diastolic pressure plus one third of the pulse pressure. This is going to be the mean arterial pressure because we know that majorly we need to provide the contribution to the diastolic pressure because it stays for longer period of time then one third of the pulse pressure. We add all, all of them we get the mean arterial pressure. And that is the pressure that we can see usually in, <coughs> in our blood cells or in our blood vessels almost everywhere in our body. When you do the ECG and everything we can find that. Okay, so that's kind of about the blood pressure. In the separate video, we'll be telling you that how to measure the blood pressure now. So that's kind of it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.